Hello, and welcome to Principles of Microeconomics. This is Module 2.1c, and we'll be discussing price controls. A price control is a government set limit on a price in, a good, in the market for goods and services. Specifically, we have either price ceilings or price floors. A price ceiling, the government is setting the maximum price that a good can be sold for. On the other hand, a price floor, the government is setting a minimum price in the market for goods and services. When we think about price controls, we have two situations and two specific outcomes that can occur in the market for goods and services. First, we have what is called a non-binding price floor, where the government sets the price limit, but this limit does not affect the equilibrium outcome. So even though the government imposed price limit exists and the price control is part of the market, it does not affect the equilibrium outcomes. On the other hand, we have a binding price floor. And with a binding price floor, the government imposed price limit or price control impacts whether or not demand and supply can equal each other in the equilibrium. It causes a distortion in the market and prevents the market from reaching the equilibrium point. Now let's look at an example so that we can really understand the difference between non-binding and binding price controls. In this example, let's consider two markets, the market for lawyers and the market for house cleaners. And we'll be looking at the impact of the minimum wage laws on these markets. Now, a minimum wage law is essentially a price floor in the market for labor. So let's assume that in the equilibrium, the market for lawyers tells us that supply and demand for lawyers is going to meet at a point where the wage rate for lawyers is going to be $100 an hour. On the other hand, for house cleaners, demand for house cleaners and supply of house cleaners is going to meet at a point where the wage rate is $8 an hour. So here we are in equilibrium. No government impact yet. Now, let's look at what happens if the government imposes a minimum wage of $12 an hour. At $12 an hour, the minimum that lawyers can be charged is $12. So we see that at $12 an hour, this minimum is significantly below the equilibrium wage rate for lawyers. What this means is that the market will clear. This will be a non-binding price floor in the market for lawyers. Because as you can imagine, no lawyer would be willing to take a job at $12 an hour. So the imposition of a minimum wage law on the market for lawyers has no impact on the equilibrium outcome. Lawyers are still making $100 an hour. On the other hand, if we look at the market for house cleaners, for them, the equilibrium wage is $8 an hour. Now, once the price floor or the minimum wage law is imposed, their wages have to rise to $12 an hour. It is illegal for anyone to pay them below $12 an hour. So therefore, what we see is that the supply of house cleaners increases, the number of people actually willing to take on these jobs increases when the wage is $12 an hour, but the number of jobs available to them declines. The demand for house cleaners is going to be lower because they are more expensive. So therefore, what we see is that this price floor, this minimum wage, causes a distortion in the market for house cleaners. This is considered a binding price floor. What we see specifically is that the supply of house cleaners is greater than the number of jobs available to house cleaners. And this binding price floor creates unemployment in this market. So as you can see, price controls can have an impact on the equilibrium outcome in the market for goods and services. Because when there's a price control, if it causes a distortion in one of the markets and that we cannot reach equilibrium, it may result in a surplus or a shortage in that market. We tend to decide as economists that government intervention is not the best way forward. And it's best to let the decentralized decisions of buyers and sellers come together to determine the price and quantity of goods and services in a market. Thanks so much for joining me in Module 2.1C.